Hello and welcome to my new episode. And this is I know this is for the first biology episode. This lesson is a bit too extreme, I know, but because it's urgent, so I think it's time to make it. So welcome again. So in this video, I will talk about a um, an organic chemistry thing. It's called glycolysis. Okay, so. In organic chemistry, you have a lot of different uh, things like substances, uh, functional groups, and some other thing like that. So glycolysis belongs to biology more. So it's like biological creature, they have this process going on. And a lot of people have problem learning about glycolysis in biology. So what happens here is that well, I should have written this one as biology as well. So what happens here is that glycolysis is difficult to learn because it has so many reactions and uh, weird enzymes and then concepts that it's really hard to get. So here I made this video to help you how to study for it in the best way possible. And I please stay tuned to me and please click on the subscribe button down there together with clicking on the bell because if you click on the bell I'll, you'll get like notified about my new videos okay and please like and share this one as well thank you okay so first what is glycolysis then so glyco is sugar and lysis is the breakdown so to stay short, to make it short, glycolysis is a breakdown of one molecule of glucose to produce two pyruvates, two ATP in total. It happened in the cytosol, which is the cytoplasms, if you ask me. Cytoplasm and cytosol is the same thing. And then it does not require any oxygen. However, if there's oxygen there, it still happens. Okay, so but it does not require an oxygen condition or environment. It has 10 steps. All right, so when I talk about producing a net of 2 ATP, it actually spans 2 and making 4. So in sum, you make 2 net. All right, so in high school level, they will only require you to remember this very little. So one glucose, 10 steps to become two pyruvates, two ATP, and then maybe some uh, H plus ions. We call it some proton. Okay, however, if you go further into AP program or IB programs or maybe uh, A level program, or even further, if you go to medical school, first year medical school, in a subject called medical chemistry or something similar to that, you encounter the um, requirements that ask you to remember all the 10 steps, the enzymes and then how to explain what happens and everything. So here is a way to do it. Okay, bear with me. Do you have some papers with you? Okay, if not, please take out like a piece of paper, like A4 paper and then a pencil, okay? Now, stage one is you should write the reactions down. I mean, the words. I need you to write down the words down. Write this down on paper for at least 10 to 15 times. Why? Because you write it down many times, your brain would think, will perceive this information as important and you'll be able to remember it. This is the foundation, please. Take out a piece of paper and pencil and write it down 10 to 15 times. Please pause this video and do it. Step 1 to 5. Please do it. Copy this thing down. Okay. So after you have copied this thing down, I'll explain further. So, 
in 10 steps of glycolysis, it actually divides into two main phases. The first phase is called preparatory, preparatory phase or preparatory stage. So they prepare. And the second phase, the stage is called uh, payoff stage. So in preparatory, uh, preparatory stage, they actually use up two ATP and payoff stage, they make four ATP. All right, just like that. So here is step one to step five. This is the five step of a preparatory, preparatory stage. And as you can see, only this substance, GAP, the lysyraldehyde 3-phosphate, will uh, continue on. It means that from step 4, this fructose 1,6-biphosphate here, it will become the two, it's split into two different substances. But this substance is the same like this one. It will be converted into GAP again. So, by A, by other words, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate will have to be converted into the GAP before this GAP can go on with step 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit. So glucose, step 1 glucose become glucose 6 phosphate. It requires an enzyme called hexokinase. And an environment that has magnesium 2 plus iron. Step 2 is when glucose 6-phosphate become fructose 6-phosphate. And you know they are fructose and glucose are isomer of each other. So isomer means they have the same amount of atoms, same number of carbon, same number of hydrogen, same number of oxygen. They just basically twitch, twitch to become like a different form of each other. So that's why you use an enzyme called isomerase, isomers, you know, to turn them into isomer of each other. And phosphor, phosphate, glucose, there you go. That's how they come up with the name, phosphor, glucose, isomerase. Okay. I'll go into details as you watch this video further. Now, step 3, fructose 6-phosphate to become fructose 1,6-biphosphate. So you see, you're adding another phosphate group in there. You use the enzyme phosphorfructokinase. And then from step 4, you turn one thing fructose one sig biphosphate into split into these two different things. The enzyme is called andolase. Step five involves turning the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, this one, into the GAP. And because they are isomer of each other, so you also use the enzyme isomerase here. But the name is different because this is a three carbon, they are both 3 carbon, so tri, the sugar is os, tri means 3, so sugar, 3, su uh, three carbon, it has a phosphate group in there, isomerase. That's how they arrive by the name of the enzyme, okay? <laughs>